Good morning, everybody. It's uh, good to be with you all again. Um, I just want to start us off in prayer again. I say, Father, thank you that we are righteous by the blood of Jesus. It's nothing that we do that can earn it and nothing that we do that can change it. We only rest and believe. And I pray that uh, you'll open our eyes, Holy Spirit, to see more, to see, reveal Jesus and the Father to us. So that grace and peace may be multiplied to us. Um, I thank you, Father, that we can come before you and just receive your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so just a quick recap of the last two sessions. You know, we've kind of we've kind of talked about our minds, having our minds renewed, and uh, the strongholds are in our minds. Um, and from there, you know, just kind of really like helped understand some of the emotions that go in our, around our bodies and how we uh, read that and, and just the en enemy's plan of attack to keep us down, down cost. And so I uh, want to keep, keep uh, um, that angle of approach. We're going to keep uh, understanding righteousness, opening that up and, uh, you know, kind of just want to flow through it a little bit and see how, see where, where the Lord takes us this morning on it. So, uh, you know, a couple of key points was that we are, we believe that God justifies the ungodly, that, you know, Jesus is, Jesus came, Jesus become, um, basically took our place. Uh, he is, he is the man, he is fully God and he's fully man. And uh, pretty much what happened was that, you know, where we couldn't attain righteousness, like no one can attain righteousness of, of their own standing because of one man's disobedience. And so if by one man's disobedience in Romans 5.19, we have all become sinners. So I said, well, you, uh, a non-believer sin, like a uh, sin because he's a sinner. It's, it's just like, you're, it's it's not something outside of you. It's kind of who you are because it's kind of what's been brought in uh, through Adam, Adam's disobedience. It's because of Adam. And so now by one man's righteous act uh, or by one man's obedience, by one man's obedience, all, many of, or all have become righteous. That So... It's a very powerful, very like just overlooked uh, scripture in uh, Romans 5, 19, in Romans 5. So, you know, to break that open, you know, it's, if, you take, if you take someone that's, um, if, to just kind of have two examples, if you take someone that's a sinner, it, when the, they, the, even if they do a righteous act, a good thing, uh, um, do something good, they cannot change the fact that they're a sinner. They still stay, say, they, stay they remain a sinner. Because uh, this, this, they didn't, they didn't even do something to become this. This is something that kind of came from Adam. And it's just kind of, it keeps continuing through. Whereas now, you know, Paul speaks about like we count ourselves dead to sin because now we are a Christian. And as a Christian, we are a new creation. We are you're a new species in a sense. Like you, you've been reborn, and of an incorruptible seed. And so right now, um, so be, on this side, you had because of Adam's disobedience, all were made sinners. So now on the other side, you have um, you have the Christian, and it says because of one man's obedience, many are made righteous, or all are made righteous. In that sense, so your righteousness here, if you sin, if you do something that, if you, if you partake in a, a sinful act, does that change your righteousness? Can you, like under Adam, you could not ch change the fact that you're a sinner, even if you did righteous. So, so under, and Adam was a man. Under God, under Jesus, who, who is 100, like 100 percent man, 100 percent God, like he is, he is much more. In that same passage, it's, it's like five times it speaks about much more. Like he is much more than Adam. Yet people still think that they, people don't grasp the fact that you cannot change 
you cannot change this right righteousness here by uh, um, make it, like messing up or making a bad decision or going down a certain uh, you know partaking in sin in a sense uh, it's like your standing your right standing doesn't move because your right standing is not based on you it's based on Jesus it's not based on what you do that's the good news and that good news right now when you hear that and you're sitting there you're not thinking about how you can sin right now you're you're just partaking in the love joy and peace as the holy spirit breathes on the truth and you it makes you love god more because you see his love for you um you know like like john the disciple whom referred to himself as the disciple whom jesus loves like he was part, he was make he could see Jesus's love, and because of that, like you see so much of John's life kind of um, standing out a little bit more. But um, coming back to that righteousness is that it's it's unshakable. Jesus, it is finished. He declared, and he's he, you know we spoke about. He sat down at the right hand of the Father because he doesn't have to work. There's no more work that needs to be added to that. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. So what remains of us then? What do we do? How do we live our lives in that? Um, and something to, to, for, for us to think about when it comes to that is, and I've been thinking about how to explain this. And for me, it's to be able to explain this whole uh, um, floodgates. Or in a sense, what God, what God wants to do is God has made everything. And is, is, he, is, he is beyond beyond what we can think or imagine and if if all the resources everything is in his back pocket and he has showed us his love by sending jesus by sending him as a little baby and he grew up into man like he's he he sent him to like he was born to die that his whole life was set out and to become um to become this uh our redeemer and so he's, it, God's love is evident um, that he's pouring it out on us and he wants to pour it out on us. So, you know, where, why are we not seeing that in our lives to the extent that, we've, that you know, we've, we should be able to see that? I mean, it, it, the, if nothing is standing in God's way, if, if, if God's justice has been fully satisfied at the cross so that now... His mercy can flow uninterruptedly. Why are we not just seeing ourselves explode with all the blessings of Abram in our lives? Why are these things not happening? And, um, you know, it, it, it is happening to an extent, but it's almost like this. In most people, that are, uh, in most Christians' lives, it's usually like breadcrumbs. It's, it's kind of like just a little bit of... A uh, um, little bit of uh, droplets of God's uh, favor and breakthrough, just enough to, you know, to kind of keep you going in a sense. It, it, it's, uh, and I, I think it's um, to explain this whole pr- this whole uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Uh, we gotta understand it, uh, what is our part to play in that, and I think you know, m- most people struggle with the fact that you, that in the back of their mind they have that their part to play is is to do something where if you the more you get into this the more you open this up and 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 and, and it's been revealed to you the more you see that there is the more it really gets solidified in you that there is nothing that you can do to add there's no works you can add that your your place is to um, enter into that rest, labor to, uh, to enter into that less rest, and believe, and believe what he's saying, believe what he's done, believe what he is speaking over you. Like align yourself with that truth. So to explain it almost like in a visual, for, uh, for me it's um, it's almost like if you if you're sitting here and you're looking right here in front of you, it's almost like you got. Uh, uh, um, like you got blinders on. People have got blinders on to just to just look here. They, they're not looking that to the left, and they're not looking to the right. And like so, in a sense, for if, for me, it feels like the the uh, um, this whole thing is like intention, where all the way on the on this side, God's it's it's so abundantly good 
that you know in in uh, in for us that um, Jesus came and took our place as a as a man yet fully man and fully God and he cut a covenant with God the Father and God the Son cut a covenant and that covenant is based on Jesus' obedience, on Jesus' righteousness, on Jesus' faith. And we get to partake in that. And it's, that is like, that is, it's, so, it's so huge that it just keeps going this way. <laughs> and then on this side, it's like, it's so far removed, not removed, but it kind of gives you the idea of how, um, how you know, you, like your part to play in it. It's like on this side is, the amount that what you need to do, like literally all it's it's so far apart, like the what we can do to even come close to what they have done because they are God and we are. <laughs> and so all that is required of us, in a sense, is Hebrews 4, where where um, where he's saying with Paul saying um, he who has entered his rest has himself also ceased from his works, as God did from his. So let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest. So we, we, are, we are told to cease from our works to make things happen and enter the rest. And so again, it's that rest and believe. Rest and believe. And so, and, and, and you know, kind of, but we we have our we have our focus right here in front of us. We you know when it comes to our mind and the enemy's mind games and keeping us kind of occupied right in front of us, it's we don't always see the full the full picture. We, and and that full picture is almost like can be brought together um, to more. And, and and God gives us gives us these weapons that that is the uh, that's pretty that's just. Is there for us to kind of really? It's not hard. It's not difficult. Um, and one of these, one of these things, like for, like for me, like it, where he, he, he kind of helps me, because it's just so, so almost unattainable to understand. But then he brings it back to help you understand. Is, uh, is in uh, where was I? In the obedience of Christ was in Romans five. Okay, I'm just gonna find my verse here. But it's uh, basically. Ah, uh, sorry, that was, not, uh, that was uh, Corinthians. But he, he's speaking about how um, and the weapons of our warfare. That's that's right. That's where we're at. <laughs> the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God, for for pulling down strongholds. And uh, it kind of goes to that list, and then it says, and it comes to bringing every thought. To the obedience of Christ. Okay, so you now you, you you see the correlation in Romans five nineteen that by one man's obedience many were, were right, made righteous. So we are, and we we now understand that the battles in our mind, the enemy comes in our mind, kind of throws out like we we our battle is there, and if you know, by knowing that you've you've kind of won half of the battle. Uh, so now it's just now it's just kind of a, you know not falling for it in a sense like it's bringing those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ Christ's obedience at the cross Christ that he is our perfect obedience is because of he his obedience that he has been like the perfect man replacing Adam the new Adam cutting the covenant with God and therefore securing eternally our righteousness and opening up the doors for God's floodgates of mercy and love and blessings to flow because it's like all those things is attracted to uh, to Jesus and Jesus is inside of us I mean yeah like even when he was a baby he, he, gold was attracted to him like you don't have to try to go get him it, it just it, it just comes so um, so uh, so that that uh, weapon to be able to use that to be able to use the fact that you bring you bring every thought into the captivity of the you bring every thought into you bring every thought make well uh, to the, um, the obedience of Christ. Go read the scripture. <laughs> it's not it's in front of me somewhere. So 
you know, I'm just going, I'm going hard a little bit fast here. So let me try to kind of slow it down a little bit so we can really, really take it in a little bit um, more fully. So Christ, uh, Christ's obedience is what we look to. Like the enemy, the, the devil comes and he's like, uh, he put, you know, you're, you're kind of doing something and you're going and, and suddenly there's a thought in your mind of like, or like, like a vulgar thought or whatever the case might be. And, and you're like, you know, you, you recognize that thought and then the enemy comes like, look, you call yourself a Christian. Like, look, look at the stuff that you're thinking about. You know, and it's, it's at that moment where you're like, thank you, Lord, that it's not, it's not, it's not because of my obedience that I'm righteous. It's because of your obedience. It's because of what you have done. I am righteous because of the blood of Jesus. I'm righteous because of the obedience of Jesus. He is the perfect one. He makes me righteous. I don't have, like, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't depend on me. And when you, when you remind yourself of that, when you make, take those thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ, you immediately feel the love of God flowing in your heart. Because you, 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 you love God. You, you, like, you want to love Him. You want to honor Him. You want to serve Him. Like, that's, you know, it's kind of just, it, it, those kind of things just happen. Those fruit just comes from, from uh, that knowing that you are loved. We love because He first loved us. So it all, just, it all just flows together. It all just keeps building interest, keeps growing, keeps uh, uh, um, making us free. And, and we, we, just, we keep expounding our territory in that sense. Um, okay, so we, are, uh, <laughs> we, we hammered that one fast and hard. Um, and with, with that last week, I was kind of touching on like, Yeah, let's bring it back to this. Like, if you if you look in that in that place, like to kind of to to hammer it in more, to kind of let it let it sink in more, you know, there's we've we've all somewhere around the, uh, uh, somewhere on our journey heard the names of God, you know, so, uh, and and who God is and what He is and how He provides for us. Like for instance. Jehovah Jireh, he is, he, he, he is our provider. Now, it doesn't say that He gives you provision, like He is your provision. Je- and so I got a couple of names here. Um, Jehovah Shalom. It's not He gives you peace, it is He is your peace. Jehovah Rapha. He doesn't give you healing. He is your healing. And it's a, there's a couple other as it, as it goes on with, uh, can, I've been sitting on. But he, he is, and, and, and as he is, so are we in this world. And so, and, you know, Jesus prayed, Lord, in John 17, I think is where he prayed about I and him, them and they and me and me and you and that, that, that prayer. Um, and so we're, it's so like just, we're so, it's it, like there's no way out of this. <laughs> and so what, what is stopping all of this stuff from exploding in our lives? For, uh, it it's, uh, it's comes to our, our thinking because when, when we listen to, when we abide in the Word and, and, uh, and the Word sets us free, but then also when we, you're listening to anointed teachings, like the, your, your thinking changes, like metanoia, meta has changed, noia has mind, like that, that's repentance. Repentance is just change your mind. It's not beating yourself up or having to go on your knees to now ask for forgiveness. Like it's just changing your mind because your standing didn't change. You're still righteous. You, you just did something and you're like, oh, okay, well, you don't repent for the sin because then your focus is, your eyes is put on the sin. No, your eyes is put on Jesus. And when you, your eyes is on Jesus, you realize like, okay, I need to change my mind about this thing that I'm doing. And you, you keep going up to the pinnacle. Oh. Which is a good point also that I threw myself off. Uh, so... We we have we talked about, we we just touched on we. Give me a second, yeah.
Okay. So we, we okay. So we are we are understanding that that, it's, that the mind plays a huge role. And then there's one more thing that I kind of um, that's been standing out, and I feel like you know la the last two weeks have been a, a, a good building blocks. And um, this this week we kind of bringing it together, but also there is there's one scripture that's just been like standing out on this and and we we have to look into it and we have to try to understand yeah what what is happening and and, and uh, um, what's going on in our lives like for instance a lot of people are contending for a breakthrough they're contending for a miracle but they're not they're not seeing it or it's it's been it's been a couple of years or whatever the case might be and so f first of all for those people i, I just want to encourage you to not uh, to not back down, to not uh, um, give in. Uh, for even Abram, who received the promise, had to wait. It, it was a, it's a, like the promises can sometimes be pro progressive. Like it took, like the blessings happen pretty quickly. And uh, but the you know where it, the blessings of you know prosperity and those kind of things. But the the blessing of the child took about 15 years. Um, and so there was some, some patience that, that was needing to be <laughs> applied in that situation. So there's nothing wrong with God. There's nothing wrong with God's word. And there is nothing wrong with you. If you don't see the breakthrough immediately, it doesn't, like when you pray, things shift, things move, things happen. Don't, don't give the enemy any place in your mind to come distract you or ask you for evidence or what is happening or you you just keep you just keep your eyes on Jesus you keep you keep walking your walk and uh, the uh, um, and keep uh, bringing all those thoughts to the obedience of Christ and your you'll find yourself you'll find yourself just flourishing in every area of life because God wants to flow through you. God wants to bless uh, the nations through you. Um, but it, it brings me, it brings us back to um, just to kind of understand this more. If we go, if if we take all of this and we understand this greatness and the blessings and the, uh, what God has given us and who we are in Christ, um, we we need to understand that there. Like our part to play is is vital from the point of you know a lot of we see a lot of Christians and uh, I mean they've been Christians for twenty years they've sacrificed so much like I mean they don't they don't watch TV or whatever the case might be <laughs> whatever they feel like they sacrifice or they keep you know just kind of going after God but then also you know there's this. Um, there's a sense of like they they've done something. There was a, there was, and, and 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 those kind of things. I'm I'm, I'm trying to not to uh, I'm trying to make it as clear as possible, but to to explain what works is to explain that anything anything that we do to add, to add on to what Christ has done is is in a sense works. Like hey, uh, I'm going you know I. I, uh, you know, as a as a Christian, like I've given up, you know, for, I've been a deacon for twenty years, you know, as an example. You've been a deacon for twenty years, and you served the God Lord faithfully, and you've showed good character, and like, you know, you're, you're the, the focus. The focus is not on Jesus. It's almost like you see the the stuff that's happening in your life, uh, and the, and those kind of things. And and, and I, I'm uh, I'm on my own journey of kind of understanding this even even deeper but to bring us to the, scri the scripture that kind of talks about this is in uh, Galatians 3 verse 9 and that one I'm going to read for us so uh, and this is Paul speaking and he says so then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham so those who are of faith are blessed when we look at Abram's life Abram was I mean, Abram is Abram. He's, a, he's abundantly blessed in every area. Um, so, and then the, real, the very next verse, verse 10, so Galatians 9, uh, 9 verse 14, but verse 10 says, For as many 
as are of the works of the law are under the curse. It doesn't say for as many as are under the law. Because we, as, we, we, we are no longer under the law, we are under grace. So um, there's the law doesn't have, doesn't have any foothold on us anymore. We, we are compl- we're dead to the law, we're dead to sin, like we are a new creation. We are under grace. So what it's saying here is for as many as are of the works of the law. Now, the works of the law is you have to do to get. You do to get um, is, is kind of the mantra. In the Old Testament, you have to do to get your blessings. You've got to do this, this, and this, and this. You've got to obey. You've got to work. You've got you to be a good character. You've got to be morally good. You've got to take care of the neighbor. You've got to here and there. Like <laughs> it, was just, it was all works so that you can attain righteousness, so you can come to the top. So you can be blessed. So you do all these things so you can get the blessing. That's the works of the law. And so what it says here, for as many as are of the works of the law. So if you think about it, there's, there is many Christians that find themselves under the works of the law. They have a half-baked gospel that is not... They're not understanding the fullness of this grace, this message that Paul so radically preached. Um, And they're falling back into works. And and, and even us, in in, in some areas of our lives, we can look at ourselves and we can can examine that uh, ourselves to see like, hey, am I I falling under the works where I'm working to attain? Because if the enemy enemy knows this very well <laughs> so if he can get if he can get you to start thinking in a way that makes you work for your righteous makes you work for for something that's already been given to you then you're now working um, you're putting yourself un, uh, under the you're basically applying works to your life to what what God has done unknowingly unknowingly and that that's what that is what's kind of kind of so fr- infuriating in a sense because this this enemy this devil this enemy we we are against as there's no character there's no honor there's it's just a sly lots of bleeping words <laughs> and uh it, it's just like keeping people down it's there is everything has been done and so now the, the strongholds in our minds, the, these negative thoughts, these things that we battle that keep us just down in the dumps, um, is we, we want to blow it open. We want to blow it open completely so that we can see, okay, well, it's not God. God is not withholding anything from us. God is a good God. He is not withholding anything from us. That right here we are reading... For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. So, if, if we are seeing things in our lives, so we are, if we are still experiencing sickness, if we are still um, having uh, financial troubles, for instance, wh- whatever the case may be, if these things are still happening in our life, it's nothing because of what God has done. It's not God doing that to you. It's nothing wrong with God's word. And the truth is that there's nothing wrong with you. But you, you have the place to, you are the gate to open or close that by your believing, by your right or wrong believing, which will lead to right or wrong living. There's nothing wrong with God. Nothing wrong with God's word, and there's nothing wrong with you. It, it comes to our right or wrong believing. Like we are the gate for these things to start flowing through. And it's not like a, it's, it's not a, a work in a sense. It is rest and believe. Like the, it is so, God is, it's so good and abundant, like nearly, could, nearly too good to be true news on this side, that on this side it says 
This news is so good. You just, your, your part is to rest and believe. Rest and believe. Rest and believe. Find the promises. Hold, like rest and thank you that this is mine because of this. Because of this. Because you constantly see Jesus. You, have only, you, you only have eyes for Jesus. He is the center. And you're not trying to make that happen. You're just, you're just looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. You're looking unto Jesus. You're uh, seeing uh, uh, the obedience of Jesus. The faithfulness of Jesus. In, uh, in his life, in his story, and, and also today. So, the, the works of the law is, is, is when you come out of that rest and you're starting to do, you're starting to, you know, I, I got to work harder here. Um, I got I to gotta push harder. I got to make this happen. And like I said earlier, like I am still unpacking that. I'm still kind of for myself um, digging into it and keep keeping it, uh, talking to it about with the Lord and with people to understand more of that works. Because obviously I don't want that any part of my life. I don't want to, I don't want to get into works and I'm not looking at that as a, as a, my eyes is not on that, but I, I am aware that this, of what this scripture is saying is that as Christians, we, we can be, even though our right standing is, is complete and finished, the, the curse can still affect us if we put ourselves under the works, if we start working, if we are going to add to what Jesus has done. Because that is... A, that, Honestly, like, that is just a, <laughs> you're telling God that His Son is not enough. He who loved the world, God so loved the world that He gave His Son. To, a little baby was born, and He was perfectly obedient, this entire, like, even when He was 12 years old. And then when He was 30, um, and God... He went to get baptized with John and the heavens opened and God spoke, this is my beloved son and whom I am well pleased. God didn't say that of anyone in the entire Bible. This, this is his beloved son. Like you start seeing God's love God's love for us is, is what, you know, seeing Jesus, seeing His obedience, seeing His love, again, brings us back and setting us free. So to land the plane, I would think that we uh, wrap it up um, and we, uh, we just get together and we discuss on, you know, we, in our lives, like are we, are we seeing, are, do we want to see what God is breaking open for? If, do we want to experience the fullness? Like we're not running after His blessings because we're running after the blesser. We're not running after the gifts. We're, we're running after He who gives the gifts. Like it's, and when we pursue Him, when, we, when our hearts are set on that, like when it pulls us out of lukewarmness, it pulls us out of like our... Uh, uh, um, mental numbness in a sense, our distractions, our procrastinations, like this gospel is exciting. <laughs> Jesus is so much, so much more exciting than we think and amazing and beautiful and fun and kind and, and the relationship that's, that's there, that everything that's opened up for you, the, 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 a life that can be fully enjoyed and fully walked out and seeing um, seeing desires fulfilled like just awake awakening us awakening us to righteousness so precise on that like to 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 give ourselves opportunity to just just talk and 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 pray for each other but mostly in a sense of just examine examine your heart like be honest with yourself where you're at where you want to be and if if this is if this is uh, um, 
this is something that you might be seeing that is happening in your life and just ask God, ask God for wisdom, ask God for whatever you might need to take that next step because He is willing and able. He is willing and able. Philip, thanks again for that message. Um, I think it's continually important to understand that we're not working, we're not adding to the realization that we can't add to our righteousness. In other words, what God did through Jesus was perfect. Um, there can't be anything added to it. You can't add value to it. You can't take value away from it. Um, Jesus, it was perfect, it is perfect, and His perfection was given um, to us by faith um, because of His Father. And so for us is, I think Philip, you charged us well at the end, is to, I guess, continually go into our faith because this is a layer by layer thing because we have things set up in our own personal daily walks with the Lord that kind of check a box that kind of, you know, they're motivated out of the right place of our heart, but sometimes they actually uh, maybe works unto acceptance to Jesus. And so today, I guess what I'd ask us to do is um, maybe reflect over the last three weeks over these messages that Philip's been bringing, and I'm going to pick them back up again on first Sunday um, this coming week, just to re what is it about righteousness, like this righteousness? What's God been revealing to you through this time? Um, what is it that He wants you to change and shift? Um, and what layer um, is He wanting to work on next? Um, this is going to be a lifelong thing, but we're going to get really, we're, we're going to stay intentionally on this because I think as we continue to understand this, that we're righteous and it's a gift and there's abundance of grace and that God's mercy is opened up with that. There's a blessing that sits on our lives. There's a blessing that flows out of our life that you can't refuse the blessing. You don't have to work for the blessing. The blessing will find you and it shows up. Because that's the, uh, that's the unmerited favor and the mercy of the Lord that's been opened up through Jesus and us being related to Him just because we're there in faith. So today, um, talk it over with your groups. Um, keep chewing this out, and we're going to keep chewing on it. And listen, if you have questions or for things you're not understanding, um, message me. Tell someone in your group that has my phone number, whatever, and we'll continue to kind of pull this out um, over the coming weeks because it's so important to who we are as believers and um, the goodness of the gospel. Have a great week. Talk to you soon. Absolutely necessary. <laughs> <laughs>